Hi guys, I haven't done a update video on the Dofa project in a while, um, but I did just release a new version, version 2.6, and I think the changes should be beneficial whether or not you use something like a Dofa watch or a Node MCU or even one of those new Dofas by Miltronics that were just released. So I just want to go over the changes real quick. So yeah, let's get started. Here I am on the GitHub page. This is github.com slash spaceuntech slash esp8266 underscore dauthor. You can also find a link in the video description. Now this is where our source code lives. And maybe you can already notice that the readme has been slightly updated. It has a little comparison here to version three. There will be some updates on version three in the near future as well. But yeah, if you want to find the releases, you go on the right, there is a releases uh, yeah, section, and that's where you find version 2.6. So you can see I just released it yesterday. Here you have the change log, there's been quite a few changes. And if you scroll down, you find all the bin files for all the configurations we uh, officially support. Um, we bumped up to version 2.6 because a while ago, actually, I think this was last summer, yeah, uh, I was working on version 2.5, then I stopped developing, I didn't have the time to continue. And so there was never like a stable re release for this. So yeah, and also this includes a bunch of changes. So let's go over the most important ones. So if you have a Dofa watch, this is the Dofa watch V2, which is the one that includes a real-time clock. Let me just turn it on. First little thing you might notice is it now tells you that it's actually scanning before you go into the menu. So now you can go to clock and you have a sub menu now. So that's where you can see the current time and you can't change it. The point of this is to not accidentally changing it. You can only show it and go back. But there's another menu called set clock and that's where you can actually change the time. This can actually keep the time because of the real time clock that is included. This is the version one and this one is a bit smaller and uh, I guess cheaper, but it cannot keep the time. So you can also uh, go into the same menu on this one, but if you restart it, it will have forgotten the time you um, set. Now in other news, I did a lot of bug fixes and that as a side effect also led to a web interface that should now be a lot more responsive than before. I can show you that in just a minute. I just want to go over some other changes first. For example, we now have four more languages that are supported. And the next thing that I want to show you is you can actually reset the settings by holding a button. And for that, I'm just going to go quickly into the wiki and show you a picture of the Node MCU because a lot of people use this board, right? Um, probably the most famous ESP8266 development board. I know it's not too much in focus, but it says RST here and flash on the other side. On the left side, you have the reset button. On the right side, you have the flash button. Now reset is basically like a forced reboot. If this is running and you click the reset button, it will basically restart the program instantly. Now the flash button is different. It's it's supposed to put the ESP into a flashing mode so you can yeah flash new firmware onto the chip. But most of the time this is done automatically anyway, so you don't actually need to use the button. But um, yeah, this button is connected to a pin and we can program it to do other things. So I've programmed it to reset the settings. So yeah, keep holding it for five seconds and it will reset the settings. Now this of course only works if you have already flashed the new version. But uh, anyway, cool feature because a lot of people keep um, putting in like a password they forget. And there are multiple ways to reset it. Um, there's a wiki article about this as well. Here it is under FAQ, how to reset slash forgot the password. And there you have all the methods. You can do it over a serial monitor. You can use it with a reset sketch. You can just re flash the Dofa firmware or what I just described, resetting it with the flash button, which is connected to GPIO zero. So you could also use jumper wires to do the same thing. And now to probably my favorite change. So if we go into Arduino, I have the ESP8266 Dofa project open here. Under a.config, you have all the different configurations. Now, if you have the latest Dofa boards installed, um, it's version 2.74. Uh, you can, for example, select NodeMCU. Well, let me let me select DStack Dofa first. And now um, you have the option here called Dofa Config, and it will let you select the board you are trying to compile for. 
So I could now select DStack the Overwatch V2 and it will compile the project with the correct settings. So it can actually use, for example, the real-time clock and the feature that I just showed. But if I would select the USB D offer, it would not compile the entire display UI and all that because the USB D offer doesn't have a display. But what's also cool is if you select Node MCU, for example, you have now a example setup for the displays you can select. And this will actually use the same setup that's described in the wiki. And here under setup display and buttons, this page is for showing you how to connect a display, which buttons you need. And yeah, this goes over everything and there is a example setup you can use. And I've built this on a breadboard and you can recreate this, okay? You don't have to use the exact same pins that are used here, but if you do, you can in Arduino just select this configuration and you won't need to edit anything in the code anymore. And if you're unsuccessful for some reason compiling with Arduino or you just want to use the bin file because that's easier for you, then um, on the release page under assets, you also now find two bin files compiled with these uh, example setups. So I hope this will help a lot of people that are trying to set up the display. I think that that makes it a lot easier for me developing as well. If you're curious on how to set up the Arduino IDE to even compile for the offer boards, um, again, you can go to the wiki. On the installation, you have the compiling using Arduino IDE section. And yeah, this describes it step by step. And now to the cool new thing that just came out. This is the D offer by Maltronics. I know mine is in a black case. The one he's selling is actually in silver. You can find it by going to Maltronics.com. And here we go. Um, as you can see, same thing I just showed, but in silver and it has nice RGB. This runs the latest firmware I just showed you. If you buy it, you will also support us. If you buy a D Stike D offer watch, you also support us, of course. Okay, so the only thing left to show is the new web interface. Okay, so here we are in the new web interface and I just want to quickly show you what changed. And the big thing that sticks out is this connected um, banner. And that's something I stole from the Wi-Fi duck. Well, I didn't stole it, I wrote that as well. But um, uh, yeah, it shows you whether or not you're still connected to the device because you often lose connection when you start a, for example, D offer tech. Um, especially if you attack multiple access points because it has to um, channel hop and then channel hopping and keeping the access point and the web server uh, all available at the same time is pretty hard for this small chip. Other than that, there hasn't been much changes. It's more the a header in the top, um, you know, scan SSID and attack and you have the settings in the right. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So I think that wraps it up for the changes. As I said, the web interface performance should be improved. So if you had problems with that in the past, give this new version a try. And if you want to support us, you can buy a uh, D-Offer from Mytronics. You can buy one from d -Stike, or you can go to spacehoon.store and get a D-Offer from us, as well as some merch like this nice Spacehoon beanie. Um, actually, I have to do a bit of a disclaimer here. We are planning on a big store revamp in the future. So yeah, stay tuned, like and subscribe <laughs> for more upcoming videos. And if you are curious about the products we're working on and want to be informed as soon as they come out, you can subscribe to our newsletter in the bottom of the store page here. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of, uh, about the new version. And I guess see you in the next video.